Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Space Quest 2. We're dead. We're not going to be dead for long. We're alive! Let's not fall to our deaths. Hooray! I'm good like that. Let's look around, shall we? You're in the transportation control room of the orbital station. This room is a buzz of activity as technicians monitor Xenon Orbital Station 4's operations. A pneumatic transport tube is accessible from the walkway above. Look, tube. A pneumatic transport tube is available, accessible from the walkway above. The tube is made of plexiglass with a transporter inside it. The physical principles involved are not unlike those which transport a spit wad through a straw. Well, let's go in. Hey, we're here. You're in an orbital station shuttle bay. A shuttle, fresh from a passenger drop on Xenon is refueling for its next trip. A pneumatic transport tube is accessible from the walkway. A refueler replenishes the shuttle supply. Can I go back in? Ah, uh, there's no reason to do that. Let's look at the ship, shall we? Shuttlecraft is your standard 10 passenger short com commute vehicle. It is primarily designed to ferry people and suppliers between orbital stations, Xenon, and other orbiting spacecraft. Very well. We can't walk diagonal. Oh. We can walk diagonal. That's actually going to be important. Well. Let's go on the ship. What's the worst that could happen? You enter the shuttle and start sniffing around for the mess you must clean. You are surprised to find that the shuttle is not empty. There are two extremely ugly suckers walking towards you. Hey, what the? Your favorite expletive here. Pow! Fwack! Pink! Thud! Your protest is cut short as two interstellar ruffians proceed to thump you unconscious. Everything fades. <laughs> what could this be? Time passes. More time passes. A strange dream turns into the realization that you are being shaken and talked to by a voice unfamiliar to you. A dull ache triggers a distant memory of a scuffle in which you were the focal point. Could it be the last game? Your awakening from your forced rest, it becomes quite apparent that you aren't in Kansas, uh, Xenon anymore. You find that you are being held upright and under physical restraint from both sides by, you guess, the galactic goons you met on the shuttle. This isn't good. As you try to struggle free, you notice that your hands are tied behind your back. Awkward. As the di eyes dial into focus, you make out an oddly disfigured being sitting before you. A sagging mass of flesh that appears to have been human at one time. Tubes and wires extend from his body, leading to machines which keep him alive. Suddenly, his visage stirs and begins to speak. If anyone's played, watch me play the last game, you'll know who this is! Well, well, did we have a nice nap? I thought we would have to resort to drastic measures to wake you. <sighs> oh, well. Welcome to my humble fortress, Kikoskia. The name's Vohol. Sludge Vohol. I was the genius behind the star generator when it was still in the concept stages. By the way, I kind of hate you. It was my ultimate war weapon until some sissy pan scientists decided we'd be better used saving lives rather than destroying them. What a waste of technology. Excuse me if I sound bitter. Anyway, I was. You ruined my Sarian operation. I was going to use the Star Generator to make Xenon pay for what they did to me. They were going to know my wrath in a big way. Somehow managed to change all that. Oh, I suppose I should have known better than to use those mental midget Sarians. That's not the point, however. You are responsible, and you shall pay. Besides, I have another plan, and you'll not be around to foil it. What are you going to do? Blow up the sun? Blow up the planet? Why are you blue? I devised a plan so horrible, so frightening so diabolical that no one will be able to stop me. Observe my latest creation, the cast of Jersey Shore! I, I mean, yes, not, not them. I intend to infest your planet with thousands of these genetically engineered door-to-door -door life insurance salesmen. <gasps> you fiend! You cannot possibly be that dark and depraved! I will at last reap sweet revenge on the scientific community that mocked me. 
by selling them life insurance. Wait, wait, did, did I think this plan through? My plan was to kill you, but I've had a change of heart. <laughs> Get it? He peers down to the hoses protruding from his chest and connected to a life support system. Forgive me, I'm a kidder. L let me try my greatest laugh, Aha! 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 You're going to kill me, aren't you? I've decided it would be much more enjoyment watching you suffer. My associates will escort you to the surface of Lambian, where you will perform many painful hours of manual labor in my minds. Be seeing you. <laughs> really, life insurance salesman? Is that the best thing I could come up with? An injection renders you unconscious. Your dragged carcass is loaded onto a shuttle. Upon reviving, you look through the viewing port to see Volhall's massive asteroid fortress getting smaller. Well, looks like I'm screwed. Oh yeah. After touching down on a giant landing platform, you are ushered onto a hovercraft waiting to transport you to the mining site. Utter despair sets in. Well, I'm glad you guys enjoyed watching me play Space Quest 2. It's been fun, but now we're going to go off to the mines and be worked to death in various mining minigames. Well, it's a pretty short game. I suppose the sequel is a little longer, like 10 minutes longer, babe. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, great. I suppose we're out of breath, out of fuel. Way to go, Gorf Breath. Don't blame me. It was your turn to fill up. You're always forgetting to do it. Wait till the master finds out. You're in big trouble. Hey! Don't talk to me that way, you slime bucket! I fell in last time, dip! The argument between the two guards is cut short as gravity asserts itself. Ah! <laughs> Good thing that guard broke your fall. He doesn't look too happy about it, though. Well, we're alive. You seem to be in a rather exotic forest. The growth here is unlike anything you're used to. On the ground lies the wreckage of the hovercraft you crashed in. Nearby the bodies of your former captors. Let's look at the body. The guard appears to be less thick than you remember him. Many of his formerly contained bodily fluids seem to be at large. Let's search the guard, shall we? You search the grotesque body and find a small, thin magnetic card. It looks like a keycard. You seem to recall seeing one somewhere in the past. Let's take the keycard. Now, look at the craft! You hear the beeping? The hovercraft has been reduced to a mound of twisting wreckage. Everything that was straight is bent. Everything that was bent is straight, is benter. There appears to be no salvageable parts. Let's turn off the homing beacon. You see a normal lot button and light. The but the light is currently on. You didn't notice it during the flight. It must have come on as a result of the pr of the crash. Press button. You press the button. The light goes dark, and you no longer notice the high-pitched beep. Congratulations! We have stopped ourselves from getting killed pretty much immediately by getting found because that was the homing beacon. Well, looks like we're on a planet. Well, what do we do now? Well, the obvious thing to do now is kill self. Oh. Cry. Talk to self. Say what? <laughs> Say what? I don't understand what. Well, um, hmm. Look, forest. You seem to be in a rather exotic forest. The growth here is unlike anything you're used to. On the ground, blah 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 blah. So, we're not dead. Yet. You must be seeing things. <laughs> am I? I don't think I am. When we come back, folks, Roger Wilco, um, Lambian, su Lambian survivor? Labion. Labion survivor, yes. It's called Labion. Anyway, until then, folks, until then, look at his blank face of resignation and doom. Well, nice knowing you, Roger. I'm gonna eventually get you killed. Until then, folks, until then. Oh, he's gonna die loads of times. See you later.